Welcome back to the Nuggets of Gold podcast and YouTube channel. Today we have Jason Aponte on and we're going to be previewing the 49ers-Lions matchup. Um, before we get into anything, I just want to go over the injury report really quickly. Uh, Jalen Hurd is out. Javon Kinlaw, E-Man, they're both doubtful, so wouldn't expect them to play. Um, and Kevin Givens is questionable. Uh, Trey Lance is, a, is ready to go. Um, Brandon Ayuk's a little banged up, but he's not listed on the injury report in terms of like missing or anything like that. Maybe he's limited. Um, on the Lions side, they have quite a bit of issues. Uh, Taylor Decker, who is their left tackle, one of their very best players on this team, he's out. And then at defensive end, they have Michael Brockers. Um, and Nick Williams, and I think another guy out. And then A.J. Parker, who's one of their corners, is also – or sorry, all those guys are questionable. And that, and then A.J. Parker is questionable as well. So a lot of guys kind of up in there for the Lions, and they're going to be missing Taylor Decker, which is a huge loss for them. Um, but, Jason, going into to week one, what's your thoughts on this on this matchup and really just on the 49ers in, in general? Um, I mean, this should be a win for the 49ers. And I think that any sort of injury concerns that you have with any of these players – just remember, it shouldn't be an all hands on deck uh, attitude. You know, if, if this was the Packers week one, I would feel like, hey, man, oh, you know, Mosley might not play. Kinlaw might not play. OK, this isn't good. But we're talking about the Lions. And there's no disrespect to the Lions. It's just, you know, it is what it is. That's what their roster looks like at this point. We uh, if, if what the 49ers are, what we believe them to be, then this should be a win. Now, again, you know, the only concerns that I have is this history of Kyle Shanahan teams coming out a little bit flat and a little bit, you know, not sharp. So and and I want to, like, you know, talk a little bit more about that, because when I sent out a tweet, people are just assuming that I'm saying that the sky is falling and that they're going to lose in week one. No. And, and there's a way to talk about it. Like you could be sharp and lose. You could not be sharp and win. And if I point to the the Bucks, right, the Bucks won a game on Thursday. They weren't exactly sharp, right? Like they, they had a bunch of turnovers, but they won the game. So win loss doesn't tell you whether the team was sharp. So I feel like what the 49ers need to do right now in this game is come out fast and, you know, and put this game away pretty early. I, you know, I don't want this team hanging around. It should never be anything that's really close. Like I point to 2019 against the Bucks. Uh, two pick sixes um, from Jameis Winston. That last pick six from Akella Weatherspoon actually really put the game away. That game was in question the entire game. You don't want that. You know, there was plenty of penalties, touchdowns called back in that game. Then you point to 2020, and the 49ers just came out, and they were flat all around. And this is and, – and the other two years, you can probably put that to, hey, the roster wasn't that good. Fine, the roster's not that good, but nobody's sharp, and that's my point. You know, so I think that's really what it is. And so – my prediction for the game is that the 49ers win. I just don't think it's this cakewalk that everybody thinks it is. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this game ended, like, in the score of, like, 28 to 17, where, like, Goff throws a late pick six or something like that, and the Lions kind of hang around. But I would love to see the 49ers do what they really can do uh, with this team, which should be to put a sizable gap in between the two of them. I just don't know if that's what's going to happen. Are they going to break the trend, or are they just going to continue this whole, you know, Shanahan needs a little while to get into it? I think – I think that's a really good point. Um, I think we would all agree the Niners should cover. I think the line is seven and a half, eight and a half. I've seen a couple different things. Um, Niners are better than this Lions team, but I think that you bring up a really good point about starting slow. Um, and if if the run game isn't running as 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 smoothly as we expect it to, I don't really have a ton of faith in in Jimmy to lead us down with with touchdown drives right down. Um, starting the game so i think it'll be pretty interesting but i still expect us to cover something like 31 21 or something like that um maybe they have a late touchdown maybe we have a late touchdown but i think it's a good point that it's gonna be more more competitive at least early um than than we expect it to be yeah i don't know so uh, like if you you brought up like you look at the lions roster it's not it's not very impressive um and I mean, they've definitely they've definitely lost a lot of guys from just last season when they also you know weren't some like great roster or anything. But if you start looking at the defense, their defense is not really put together. I would probably say that the part I'd be most concerned about is the 49ers' offense coming out flat, just because we've seen that they've come out flat. I'm like I'm especially looking back uh, last year, looking back at the Vikings game when Jimmy started his like you know first season. Um, and they looked bad in that Vikings game last year against the Cardinals. They did not look good. It looked pretty flat. I will say they should still be able to get it done. Um, I'm very confident defensively for the Niners. Like I, I would find it hard. Like I think you, and you just said 31, 21, I would be, I'd find it really hard if the Lions were able to put up three touchdowns on offense. Like that would be 
a little, not maybe a red flag, but it, it would be a little bit concerning for me just because if they won 17 to three, I think that makes more sense than like a higher score, scoring game. Um, the Lions offense is not built to, to beat this 49ers defense at all. Jared Goff, we've seen how bad he's played against the, the Niners. Their offensive line is not, I wouldn't say in shambles, but they're missing Taylor Decker, so it makes it a lot tougher. Penny Sewell is going to be on an island against Nick Bosa, and yes, he's Penny Sewell, this marquee guy coming out. He didn't play college football last year, and he has struggled really bad in preseason. So not to say that like he's going to have a bad career or anything like that, but he absolutely has his work cut out for him week one. Like this is like this is one of the hardest matchups you can have being on an island against the pass rusher. Not to mention, like Nick Bosa wants to come out and absolutely dominate this year. Like it's been pretty clear. Like if you hear him talk, he is fired up. His all of his recovery, like his recoveries have gone really well. His athletic measurables have pretty much all increased since before his knee injury. Like he is coming out ready to go. Um the 49ers don't have a ton of injuries, nothing like super concerning. I think the cornerback two slot, you could you could look at that as being a little bit concerning. But, I mean, the Lions, their second receiver, If because I think Amonra St. Brown is more of a, a slot guy. Uh, but Quentin Cephas, Khalif Raymond, out behind Ty- Tyrell Williams, like that's not anything super impressive. And you look at, okay, well, where's where's the, like, the, the Lions' best positional spots? Tight end is probably one of them. Tight end and tackle, but they're missing one of their tackles. And TJ Hawkinson is probably their best weapon. And he's going up against the best coverage linebacker in the league. Uh, so that's where it just it doesn't really work out that well for them. I think the 49ers are going to be able to generate both interior pressure and pressure on the outside. Um, and if that happens to Jared Goff, we've seen that Jared Goff kind of crumbles in those spots. So I think it's a tough matchup for them. Do I think that the 49ers offense is just going to go out there and dominate them? No, I don't. But if they get the run game going, if it's one of those, oh, Raheem Mostert took it 80 yards to the house, and then the Niners busted out six yards per carry after that, like it could look like that. And if it looks like that, it's going to be over right away. But if it doesn't, they might have to rely on their defense a little bit more, which honestly I'm fine with. I mean, you keep putting this defense in, in crunch time spots, you know, difficult situations where they have to come out on top. We saw in 2019 – that made this defense really good come the end of the season where they were ready for anything. Like they really were. And so I think that that kind of, I think that's probably a better way to, I guess, improve this team. If it's not like just a blowout and over in the second quarter and you have to have some big time defensive moments um, in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, whatever that is. So, I mean, that'd be, and also that's a lot more fun to watch too. (laughs) I mean, it's not exactly fun to watch when it's it's 31 to three and it's, it's over. Um, but I do think that we could see a, a little bit of struggles on the offensive side, uh, especially in the red zone, because we've seen that the Niners are, I, I, at least I think so. I think that they're going to ru- use Trey Lance a lot more inside the 20s than from the 20 to the 20, because we've seen Jimmy's, Jimmy does well 20 to 20. He does well in the middle of the field. But when they get into the red zone, that's where almost all of like his really bad moments have come. They don't necessarily punch it in as much as you would like them to. So I think that might still be an issue because I don't expect to see Trey Lance really at all in this game. I think the first time we're going to really see Trey Lance in this like potential two quarterback ish system, even though I think it'll be like every few drives. I don't think we'll see that until week three against the Packers, just because I don't think you want to show that against the Eagles or against the the, the Lions. Um, but if, if it's crunch time, it's late in the game, we might see a little bit of Trey Lance um, or if it's a blowout, I mean, he might get to, to play some, but that's where I'm at on this team. Um, Jason, you were talking about corner. Um, what were kind of your, are you concerned about the corner spot? Well, I have been since the season, you know, since the off season, right? Like I, I think it was the last time that I was on your show, right? I wanted AJ Boye. I wanted Steven Nelson. I wanted, uh, another NFL caliber starting cornerback, not a guy that's a lockdown guy. Again, I'm, I'm big on track record. So they drafted Demo. They drafted Ambry Thomas. So you think, okay, they're addressing the position. When I was at camp, Ambry Thomas struggled. Um, everybody kind of saw that. Um, and Demo actually kind of stepped up. But what I was going to say is, is the person that was running with the ones when uh, Emmanuel Mosley was out was good old Dante Johnson, who will always find his way on this roster. So wouldn't be surprised if you get a little dose of Dante Johnson this week. Um, and, you know, and, and this is the perfect week for it, right? You know, um, no reason to push Emmanuel Mosley out there if, if not, you know, need be. This is a bigger game against a higher profile, maybe a divisional playoff uh, team or 
a playoff team or something like that. Okay, I can see you trying to push the issue with that, but they can get by with Dante Johnson. You know, the, the, the fan base likes to, to, you know, take shots at Dante Johnson because he finds his way on his roster. He's not as bad as people make it seem. You know, again, the uh, the, the Eagles game where he, he you know, uh, he gave up that touchdown, he was in perfect position. It was a beautiful throw by Carson Wentz, and he tore his groin on the play. Like, I like the guy, like, did everything he could. Like, Carson Wentz wouldn't have been able to walk that ball over to him and handed it to him better than he threw it that one time. And now Carson Wentz is on another team, and Travis Fulham's not even on a roster at this point. I think he's on somebody's practice squad. So that's just kind of how it went. Everybody likes to take shots at him, but I don't really think it's a big problem. But my concern comes in in those the other games, like with the Packers, right? If Emmanuel Mosley can't go, now it's worrisome that Dante Johnson's out there. I like the addition of Josh Norman. I felt like that was something that, you know, was a good move because, again, I like track record. But corner, as we saw in the Miami game, all it takes is for Brian Allen to be in there and, and and your whole defense can crumble. Your whole defense can crumble because people are just literally, where is he? Go, throw to him. You know, that's the type of thing that I get nervous about. doesn't matter what you have on the front and the back end or anything like that. If you have that one corner that can be picked on, that's the issue. So the 49ers are one injury away from, you know, God forbid, Jason Verrett, God forbid, you know, Emmanuel Mosley's out for a while for this to get a little hairy. I know Demo did well, in preseason, I know he did well at camp. That doesn't mean anything until the lights come on. So, I mean, yes, you're you're you know you're you're happy with his progress. You're you're happy to see him going. Ambry Thomas is far behind him, and and if he gets on the field, then things are really going to start to get hairy. So, yeah, that's just really my concern. I don't think it should be a concern for this game, but uh, you know, bring Emmanuel Mosley along slowly because you do need him um, going forward when the games get tougher. Yeah, I think you you, you hit it right on the head corner for this entire Shanahan era has not been a a, a point of, of strength we saw with the Brian Allen stuff um I mean they they had Sherman for a little while but even during his second team all pro season like he was not the the, the old Sherman they sat in, in in zone a lot um I think you you bring up a really interesting point um in in that we're one injury away. I feel really good about the D line depth linebacker, obviously like in like an injury to Fred is, 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 is going to cripple you, but I feel good about the linebackers out there. Safeties. I, 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 I feel pretty good. Um, that, 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 that corner two spot is a little bit dicey. I mean, maybe offensive line is second on that list. Um, I'm just hope that, that we don't see any sort of major injury. I think we're due for a, like a relatively healthy season law law of averages has to help us out at least a little bit um but i mean norman i think was a decent signing he's not going to be like a starting caliber 2015 josh josh norman corner um but we just don't want brian allen out there i don't think i wonder what what do you think brian allen is 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 doing for his daytime job right now what i mean is he I mean, I, I feel bad for the guy, right? Like, again, um, he just got picked on, right? And and it wasn't his fault. He shouldn't have been no. out there. He shouldn't no. have been out there. That's that. And and I don't blame him, right? Like, there's plenty of players who are in this league and they contribute in whatever way. But it was unfair to throw him out there. And and then the Dolphins just they they knew how to attack. Kudos to the Dolphins for doing that. But I feel bad for him. A lot of people pile on him. They always keep like joking around. But like, it's it's messed up. He kind of got put into a no win situation and. That team was a mess that entire game, too. It wasn't just them. Like, that entire oh, yeah. team played badly. So Both sides of Jimmy's, the ball. Jimmy's crowning crowning achievement was throwing the pick right at the end of the half. That's when I was like, I'm done. <laughs> um, it's time It's 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 time to move on. But Yeah, that was, a, that was a brutal game, dude. I remember yeah, I was, was – I, like, was coming back from vacation, and I left early so I could make it back. And then I was watching. I was like, why did I come back early? Like, this is such a bad idea. One well, at least that game was over ball. early. Yeah. yeah. One of my roommates is a Dolphins fan, so I was hearing about that for the next two, three <laughs> weeks, which was rough given that we got absolutely destroyed. Um, it was definitely sad. but yeah. Also, in that game, like, Jason, you brought up Brian Allen got absolutely picked on. They, it was no safety help over the top. No. They were letting him go press man with Devontae Parker. It was, right. Well, it didn't oh, matter who. It was Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, anybody. If he was in coverage, they were just like literally Fitzpatrick's like, where is he? There he is. Throw it. And 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 they just kept on. And and again, that's the portion that I'm going to throw on Salah is, oh, dude, if you know he's getting cooked, send somebody over his other way. You know, like you have to – you can't be rigid in that. You know, I think Salah did a phenomenal job last year, and I think it was his best coaching job if you ask me. But that game, that left a little bit to be desired in that aspect. I, I agree with you on that because I felt like that was a game where it was like, damn, like there's no adjustments being made. And then after that, 
maybe you could bring up the Bills game maybe of like, oh, there wasn't enough adjustment made. I'm going to say that that's a credit to how good the Bills offense was and how was good different. Josh Allen was. But most of like for the rest of the year after that, it was like adjustments made right away always felt like. And that's so I did feel like that was the game that was like, damn, there are literally like no adjustments being made. They just keep throwing Brian Allen out there. Right. And then with the Bills game, I just felt like uh, they had too much firepower. Josh Allen was on fire. And, you know, there were some mistakes on like, you know, Dante Johnson played in that game. Um, the the Palms touchdown that was given up, he was supposed to blitz. They just like they were just off in that game for some reason. So and, but I mean, credit the Bills. They were really good. Honestly, they were a great team. They're, they're a top two team in, in the AFC. So. Yeah, I agree with that as well. So I think that's going to do it for this preview. We just wanted to get something out, you know, real quick, kind of talk about what we're thinking here. Um, we're going to have another segment coming out tomorrow, us three as well. Um, and that's going to be just on Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, their chances of winning defensive player of the year. I think Fred is one of my favorite, just like throwing five bucks and you could potentially win like 300 hundred something just because, I mean, Fred's one of the most exciting players to watch in the sport. And if there's a linebacker that's going to win it, it's going to be Fred. Uh, so we're going to talk about that then. But I do think cornerback two for this game, you look at the the, the receivers that the Lions are throwing out there. And I think specifically you look at Amonra St. Brown probably getting many more looks in the slot. And I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world. Um, now, you like you said, you throw that out against the Packers and you don't have that depth or you have a couple injuries, it's going to look a little scary. I really wanted them to go and sign a couple guys like – Rashad Breeland, for example, a guy that makes $1 million that at the end of the day, you can always have him as your, your cornerback number two, and he might get picked on a little bit, but he's going to hold his own. Um, I do think that you start generating some pressure and Dante Johnson is not going to get like destroyed or anything like that. Like you said, he, he is a corner that is, it feels like he's in the right spot. Most of the time he just lacks the ball skills. Like he's not going to, he's not going to go out there and just have like crazy PBUs and stuff like that, but he's usually in a solid spot. Um, our receiver is going to go up and make some plays on him from time to time, of course, but that's what's going to happen if they're, if you're being the targeted corner in that number two spot, as long as you can hold your own to, to an extent and you let Bosa, you let D Ford on third down, you know, Eric Armstead, all these guys, DJ Jones this week, like you let those guys get to the quarterback and it's, you're going to be successful, I think. So I do think it's not, you know, the biggest issue, but moving forward, it's something that you definitely want to monitor. Maybe we watch this game, we go, wow, every time Tyron Williams went on Dante Johnson or maybe Josh Norman comes in or D maybe Diamador Lenore comes in and it's like that guy's always getting picked on, then it definitely becomes like probably like the main thing that you're going to watch in the second week because there's a chance that you see Devontae Smith up against those guys. So it's definitely something to monitor, but this week I don't think it's the biggest thing in the world. I did see that it, it sounds like Emmanuel Mosley is not going to be gone too long, so so that's a good sign as well. Um, but that's all I got. Anything else you guys want to add before we, we take off? Nope. All right, sweet. Well, thank you all for listening. Um, if this is your first time checking out the channel and you like it, uh, subscribe. That's great. Uh, like and subscribe. But that's going to do it for today, and we will talk to you tomorrow.